In this video, we'll look at something that has puzzled me for a long time. And it's the fact that doctors just can't seem to fix repetitive strain injuries, or RSI, such as carpal tunnel syndrome or tendinitis. As a result, we have hundreds of thousands of people who continue to suffer in pain for months or even years, despite trying every available treatment out there. I personally suffered from RSI in my arms, wrists, and hands for over two years. At one point, my pain had become so bad that I seriously thought I'd have to change careers or stop working altogether. I considered an expensive surgery, but I knew that there would be a long recovery process and no guarantee of success. I considered using a voice recognition software to write emails and surf the web. And I resigned myself to a scenario where I'd probably be afraid of using a keyboard for the rest of my life. Not very exciting if you ask me. And what was most frustrating about the whole experience is that I tried just about everything that I was prescribed or could get my hands on. Now you can see here a list of some of the things that I tried over a period of about 30 months to get rid of my pain. This list is not even exhaustive, by the way, but it includes painkillers, hand stretching routines, ergonomic gadgets, hot and cold compresses, physiotherapy, electrotherapy, vitamin and mineral supplements, you name it. And the thing is, nothing really worked. I wasted thousands of dollars and several months of my life with nothing to show for it. And no matter what I tried, my pain slowly kept creeping up, getting worse and worse. I visited several doctors and physiotherapists, and all of them prescribed me one or more of the things that you see here on the slide. So I'm making this video because I'm angry. Healthcare in many parts of the world is in a state of crisis, and chronic pain such as repetitive strain injuries is just one example of a problem that doctors simply cannot seem to, to be able to adequately address. Now, pain problems have grown to epidemic proportions. In fact, according to the U.S. Occupational Safety and Health Administration, RSI affects some 1.8 million workers per year. One government study puts the cost of RSI at between $17 billion and $20 billion a year. It's totally crazy if you think about it. And what's even crazier is that the majority of people who suffer from RSI have severe pain symptoms for well over a year. In fact, I recently conducted a study or a survey among people who suffer from RSI, and 84% of the respondents said that they had been suffering from RSI symptoms for more than one year. I even had a few people tell me that they had been suffering in pain for more than 10 years. So this really got me thinking, why is it that we just can't seem to cure this chronic pain? This can't be rocket science, can it? So my core premise here in this video is that the medical community fundamentally misunderstands the root cause of RSI. And this is why most doctors have not been able to properly treat patients who suffer from such pain. And this is why we have people who have suffered from RSI for years or even decades and who have tried every possible treatment they have been given, but without any success. The point is, if you understand what causes your pain, you can address this cause and become pain free. If you still feel pain despite trying all sorts of things, it's probably because you don't fully understand the cause of the problem. This is pretty straightforward stuff, but why can't most of us do that? Well, there's a few reasons which I'll quickly cover in this video. Now, the first is that we confuse cause for effect. For RSI in particular, doctors are unfortunately trained to treat the symptoms rather than the cause of the problem. The second reason has to do with incentives. This is what motivates people to behave in a certain way. And the last reason is the hyper-specialization of the medical profession, which sometimes can lead us to lose sight of the bigger picture, which is our human body. And sometimes we only focus on the body parts without regard to how our body and our entire musculoskeletal system is interconnected. So these are the three reasons why, in my opinion, doctors just can't seem to properly address repetitive strain injuries, such as carpal tunnel syndrome or tendinitis. Let's discuss the first reason. So the first reason why most doctors can't treat RSI is that they confuse cause for effect. In fact, through years of research, I found that almost everyone gets this one thing wrong about RSI. The thing is, almost all treatments, methods, or gimmicks for treating RSI, including wrist braces, painkillers, hand stretches, eyes compresses, ergonomic keyboards, and even surgery, all of these things are based on the assumption that the cause of your pain is located where the site of your pain is. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, for example, if your hand and your wrist hurt, right now you probably think that it's because there's some kind of problem with your hand and your wrist. 
where else could the problem be, right? Well, it's a pretty logical thing to assume, and that's what I thought too for about two years, and this got me nowhere. As I just told you, I tried dozens of things to get my pain to go away, and none of them worked. And I'm sure you're in a similar situation, so clearly this tells us that we must be doing something wrong. Now, the big aha moment for me was when I finally understood that this assumption that the cause of my pain was located where the site of my pain was, that assumption was actually wrong. Now, this is really important, so let me repeat this again. The cause of your pain is not where the site of your pain is. If you truly want to solve your pain problem, you'll have to look elsewhere. It sounds so simple, right? But it throws everyone off, including trained medical professionals. And this is one of the reasons why millions of people have seen their lives ruined because of carpal tunnel syndrome and other similar pain problems that just won't go away no matter what you do. Now you have to remember that a symptom does not cause chronic pain such as RSI. A symptom is a signpost or a fingerprint. It's an indicator of a problem, not the problem itself. Another key related point is that you need to differentiate between what might cause your pain on the one hand and what might trigger and sustain it on the other. The point is that some t something that might trigger or sustain your pain is not necessarily the same thing that causes it. So typing on a keyboard or playing a musical instrument might very well trigger RSI symptoms, but millions of people type on keyboards all day, every day, and most people don't develop RSI symptoms. So clearly, the cause has to lie elsewhere. Let's turn to the second reason why most doctors can't treat RSI, incentives. In economics, incentives are what motivates you to behave in a certain way. An often told story to demonstrate how incentives drive behavior is that of Vietnam under French colonial rule. Back then, there was a rat problem, and to solve the rat infestation, the French offered a bounty on rats, which could be collected by delivering a rat's tail as proof of murder. Many bounties were paid out, but the rat problem didn't improve. Officials soon started to notice rats running around without tails. What happened is that people were cutting off the tails and releasing the rats to breed. This way, they could increase the pool of potential bounty revenue for themselves. And this is how incentives drove their behavior. Now, why am I talking about incentives and how is this relevant to the pain that you're trying to get rid of? Well, one of the world's most successful investors, the billionaire Charlie Munger, believes that incentives drive nearly everything. He says, show me the incentives and I will show you the outcome. And I also believe that to be true. Now, what you have to rec recognize is that it's much more profitable for doctors in the pharmaceutical industry to sell solutions that only treat the symptoms rather than the root cause of the problem. And that's especially the case if you can make a lot of money treating the symptoms, but not much money treating the cause. The American writer Upton Sinclair wrote that it's difficult to get a man to understand something when his salary depends upon his not understanding it. You might think this is terrible and evil, but this is just the way human psychology works. So the problem is that pe the people driving the search for RSI cures are those looking to make a profit. And unfortunately, financial conflicts of interest guide the research agenda to areas that are profitable for the companies, but not necessarily health priorities. Often companies will come up with quick, short-term solutions such as painkillers that do nothing to treat the root cause of the problem. So put simply, medical research funding is directed towards pharmaceuticals, medical devices, and medical procedures because this is where the profit potential lies. Now, don't get me wrong here. Drugs, medical devices, and medical procedures save lives and are an absolute necessity in our world. In the last century, we've discovered antibiotics to cure deadly infections and surgical techniques to transplant hearts. Many of us alive today would have long since died were it not for some of the astonishing medical advances seen in recent decades. We live an average of 20 years longer than our great-grandparents. Calling modern medicine a scientific miracle is no exaggeration. That's why I've used it, you've used it, and we should all be grateful that we can continue using it. But for people living with RSI, painkillers, medical devices, and medical procedures are more often than not counterproductive, if not downright unhelpful. This is not an armchair deduction. There are plenty of statistics, data, and research to support this argument. In fact, the chronic pain and RSI epidemic that we're seeing across the United States and in other countries is a proof that somehow the medical system has been incapable of properly dealing with this problem. Now, the third reason why most doctors cannot treat RSI has to do with the hyper-specialization of the medical profession. This leads us to lose sight of a more integrative, holistic view of the human body. What do I mean by that? 
Well, many people spend a lot of time and money seeing super specialists for each different areas of their body. Many specialists tend to see the patient only in terms of her carpal tunnel syndrome, for example, or tennis elbow or shoulder impingement. There's this trend toward what I call body parts medicine, which fails to see people as individuals. A patient is simply a collection of body parts to many of today's specialists. Patients receive a diagnostic label and they receive treatment according to an evidence-based model. In fact, a famous anatomical physiologist called Pete Egoscu says that the musculoskeletal system's worst enemy is the x-ray machine. Why? Because we went from observing the body from the outside with our two eyes to scrutinizing it with a specialized instrument from the inside. Now, Egoscu is not some kind of ludite. He recognizes that x-rays answer many important questions, but they can be problematic because we end up looking at the site where there is pain and visible damage because we mistakenly believe that the problem lies there. But what if you have pain in your wrist or in your hand, but the cause of the problem actually lies elsewhere? So the good news in all of this is that RSI can be treated. In fact, RSI is not a disease or a genetic disorder. It's simply pain in your muscles, nerves, or tendons. But in order to treat this pain, you need to understand and address the root cause of the problem, as well as factors that sustain the pain. I hope this is not too controversial of a statement. And thankfully, you won't need to undergo surgery, take painkillers, or pay for expensive therapy to achieve this. This is something I discuss in detail in the Finally Pain-Free program, which you can learn more about in the description of this video. I'll leave you with a couple of thoughts based on the extensive research I've conducted on RSI and based on my own recovery and that of hundreds of others. The first here is that your pain will not go away by itself. Right now you might be thinking that, hey, things will get better with time, right? After all, most injuries heal naturally over time. Well, that's what I thought too, but unfortunately that's not how things work with pain such as carpal tunnel syndrome and other types of RSI. Again, unless you understand the root cause of your problem and you act accordingly, your pain is not likely to get better and it might even get worse over time like it did for me. Second, no amount of rest and inactivity is going to help. You might think that taking some rest off from work will make things better and it might, but it's going to be temporary. The problem is that as soon as you restart doing the activities that's associated with your pain, such as typing on a keyboard or playing a musical instrument, your pain is going to reappear very soon. Third, pills, ergonomic gadgets, or even surgery are not likely to solve your pain uh, on a permanent basis. The reason is because these things do not address the root cause of your problem. Plus, surgery can be very expensive or involve long wait times, and it's not without risks. It also involves a long rehabilitation process. For me, surgery was definitely out of the question. All right, so that concludes the video. Thanks for watching, and I hope that you gain some useful information and have a better understanding of the reasons why doctors just can't seem to fix repetitive strain injuries. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know in the comment section down below. And don't forget to subscribe for more tips and information about how to get rid of RSI.